Good day and welcome back to another episode of Down the Rabbit Hole with Bill Inspector Steve Nason. Today I want to talk about ICF walls with holes. Now it's windows and doors and uh, openings within the, the walls. And once again, these uh, sessions are meant for information only and try to point you in the right direction on where to find these things and, and navigate yourself through the codes. But when in doubt, uh, you need to uh, reach out to the uh, manufacturer of your block, their distributor, or their technical support for help uh, again, because these, you know, these can be confusing, and the building code can be confusing to understand when it comes to ICF. Okay, so let's just take a, a look and see if we can take a peek and see if we can sort this thing through. Once again. Uh, Buildings are limited to two stories in height, single dwelling, three meters from floor to height. Okay, so there's, there's a three meter height requirement in there. So there is some uh, limitations on, uh, on the buildings. Now there's four ways that an ICF design can be done. One is through the prescriptive end through the National Building Code of Canada. And now a relatively new uh, manual put out by the ICF of uh, Manufacturers Association is called Insulated Concrete Forms, Manu Forms Manufacturers Association Manual, and that's a manual put out by six manufacturers, and they've come together and said, hey, let's just make one manual, and then once everybody gets used to that manual, it'll be easy for the uh, builders and inspectors to understand, okay? Now, the other one would be the manufacturer's manual. That would come directly from the block manufacturer. They've engaged an engineering firm to do their calculations. Now, the only thing that you want to make sure is that the stamping documentation is current for the, the year that you're doing the job, okay, or the current to the national building code that you're using, okay? So that's the only thing. The other one is, of course, site-specific. You'd have an engineer uh, that would do a site-specific design, okay? So those are some of the limitations that you've got, but at least you've got four ways that you can do a project. A couple things you're going to need to know. You're going to need, as I say, the building blocks. You're going to need to know some uh, climatic data. Okay, you're going to need the snow load, wind pressure, seismic, uh, their seismic equivalent spectral response acceleration, and that comes out of the ICFMA manual. So, you know, you're going to need to know those as you apply the various tables and charts. Now, as I said earlier, you know, when you're doing a, an ICF design, you're going to need a bearing pressure, tie spacing, block height, and those type of things on on that because they would, uh, the blocks would vary from manufacturer to manufacturers, and the bearing pressure would, depending on the soils you're putting this on. So let's start with foundations, okay, and then see where we're going with foundations. Okay, one of the things that you've got to look at, uh, whether it's an ICF, uh, is either a concrete wall or an ICF. Okay, they're they're no they're no different. An ICF is basically a concrete wall with an outer jacket of foam on it. Okay, so as a building inspector or a builder, you've got to look at that and say, okay, that's essentially a concrete wall that they've left the forms in place. Okay, so the formwork would be the ICF and the concrete. So it's no different than a normal wall. The only difference is, is that when you get above a foundation supporting another ICF, then that turns that into a different beast. That turns a, the foundation is then need, required to support an ICF, okay? But if it's supporting a wood frame construction, end of the day it's it's the same thing as a concrete wall just that they've left the outer jackets on so it would be the same as a contractor would be leaving the plywood on for whatever reason on on a foundation wall so you still have to maintain the the thickness is the same as a concrete wall and the other caveat is that you need to be they shall be laterally supported at the top that word shall is a big one so as Inspectors, we, we take that, you know, okay, that's a no-go. Okay, so when we talk about foundation walls, they're considered to be laterally supported at the top, right, with some criteria. So you can't have an opening any wider than 1.2 meters wide, and you can't have openings that are more than 25% of the wall. 
Okay, now that would rule out a um, walkout basement because again, that's an opening greater than 1.2 meters wide. Okay, as you can see in this diagram below here, there's a cumulative here. So if you take these and these, you can't be any more than 25% of the wall of the wall opening. Okay. So, you know, and then, uh, you know, there, there's other criteria that say you're laterally supported on, on, the, on the wall. It's just not the openings. If you look at, uh, we'll just dive in here for a second. I'll go back here. But if you look, you're, you're going to need laterally supported on the top for your floor system and, peg and pinning and stuff at the bottom. So it's just not the openings. It's, a, it's the how you... How you support the bottom and how you support the top as we talked about earlier in walls they have to be uh the floor joists ha have to have a play a part into that laterally supported wall so what happens is that in the national building code is we get into a problem here when you get a step footing on a icf then it's not laterally supported so again you've got to deal with uh the the foundation or the strip the pinning and you have to deal with the floor joists. Okay, so, all right. Now, they talk about reinforcing around the openings. And they direct you to the portion that talks about above ground, boundary, uh, above ground walls. So when we go look in the above ground wall section, okay, now the key word in this is reinforcement, okay? You know, like if you see here, it says no openings within it. That doesn't talk about reinforcement. Reinforcement is right here, okay? Now, uh, so they want 600 millimeters beyond the edges of the openings, okay? Uh, and they say, so if you look here, on this one, they talk about 70% of the wall length, but below, they said 25, right? So once again, is that you need to, Look at the, the your word choices, I guess, is what we look at and say, okay, reinforcement here is good. All right, we got that. That's for non-load bearing walls. Okay, so let, let's just look at uh, a load bearing wall would be an exterior, well, there, they would, foundation would be all load bearing, right? Not unless you've got a interior partition or something, but anyway, ex the, the walls of the foundation would all be load bearing. So when we drill down here, we're looking for reinforcement, okay? Okay, uh, wider than 1,200 meters, mil millimeters. That's 1.2 meters. Uh, bingo. Uh, once you go past that one, then it's not laterally supported. So why even talk about that? Because again, is that uh, they shall be reinforced at the top. So then it'll, that would kick you into a uh, ICFMA manual type of thing. Okay, so uh, the only thing is that they talk about here one four. And so we'll we'll deal with the above ground one on there, but this four foot rule wouldn't apply to a basement because it's it only talks about openings uh, reinforcement. Okay, so uh, you can have my my opinion only. You can have a four foot or you can have an opening within a corner of a basement because the the code book, the National Building Code, only talks about uh, reinforcement as per. 92017-3 and 92017-4. Okay, so we're going to jump into above ground. Okay, and this is and that's what the code section is 920 takes you into above ground walls. So openings in non-load bearing walls. So once again, is that this is the criteria? You can't. Uh, that's a four foot rule. So once again, when you get into uh, closer to this four foot corner. Then it's going to be. Then you're going to have to deal with shear walls, and we'll deal with that in, in a separate act, uh, video because shear walls are a bit uh, tricky to understand. They're not tricky to to do, but they're tricky to understand for build, for everybody. Okay, so they talk about uh, openings more than six hundred, not more. Uh, reinforce the top and bottom with one ten m bar. Uh, reinforcement. So it, this talks about all this, and th these are found in the user guide. So you can see how they've got the reinforcement here, uh, a minimum depth, okay, of concrete. So once again, look in your code book. Okay, so now we're talking about openings and load-bearing walls, and then this is where they get into the the, the stirrup 
end of it, okay? Openings, corners of load-bearing walls, uh, lintel shelf of light openings wider than 900 millimeters, okay? And, and then lintels, there's tables for lintels, okay? So uh, reinforced, uh, wider than 1200 shall be reinforced with shear walls with 10 M stirrups, half the distance. So this is where they're talking about, these are the stirrup bars, okay? All right. So the stirrups will go up here and hook this one and go around and hook that one. So wider than 1200 millimeters require the stirrup bars. Okay, so let's just dive into the into the, the tables this, that they require, okay? So for a, a six inch wall, wall, minimum lintel depth is eight inches. Okay, and then this is where the snow load go, comes in play, okay? Uh, so once again, is that you, you need to uh, look at that in there and, and see where you're at. And what this will do is that your lintel depth will get thicker depending, and, and so your opening will get wider. So you need to look at your, uh, your, your look at your tables, okay? So in, in St. John area, we're, we're, we're going down here. So if I want a depth of 600 millimeters, this will give me my clear span for my lentils, okay? Pretty straightforward. Now, I don't know, I got a little circle here. This was a code, something they messed up. If you go into that, it talks about underside lumber for whatever reason, okay? So, and then, and 17.4. So, uh, these are the same as you design a header for a, a house, whatever. Uh, again, the tables are here. So, supporting light frame roof only, supporting uh, a second floor and a light frame roof. So if that's a two-story building, then you're on this side. If you're a one-story building, you're on this side, okay? So they're pretty straightforward. Once again, is that there's B, they, they, they talk about uh, clear spans again on it, but, uh, and we'll just roll back up here. You can see at the top here, 110 M at the bottom, okay? And so you should just go through that. Stirrups are required at half the distance for the spans greater than 1200. So they are requiring stirrups on that. So once again, read the read the book. Okay, so we're gonna jump into the ICFMA manual a bit here. And now, as I said, there's six manufacturers that have put this all out. And again, is that it's essentially a part four book because what we do is we'll go through here. As you can see, you've got the stamp. So it's no different than leaving part nine, paint part four and asking for a stamp because we do have a stamp here. Like if you see here in for New Brunswick, you know, Ontario, whatever, those are stamped. So as long as you stay within that uh, guidelines that you're good. Now, what I'm gonna tell you again, and one thing that I've learned is that the devil's in the details. You've got to read this ICFMA uh, section, this one day, these, I would say, note section, because there, there's requirements for all your ICF construction sprinkled throughout this whole manual. So you may be looking for something and you'd say, I don't see a drawing for it. No, it's, it's in here, right? So uh, again, you need to you know, above grade wall. So you need to look at the, go through here and read it and highlight it, okay? Because it's very important. Um, okay, what else? Okay, so let's just go down here on windows and doors openings, okay? So there's a whole section on these and they talk about a whole section about um, lintels, okay? So you need to go through a minimum, shall be completely around all sides of the, of the openings, right? Uh, and they talk about, uh, Vertical bias shall not well shall extend full height of the walls on each side. So they're asking for. Or so once again is that you go through this manual, highlight this various stuff that you need to know. Okay. And they'll talk about that. So. And in that manual, you'll see how you've got the the stirrups, the 10 M bars, and see how they've got these full height to the bars type horizontal bars beneath that. So you'll, you'll run through that and there's your stirrup in there. And again, there's good pictures all the way through that and I'll walk you through. Now let's just see, okay, so once again is that 
when you're looking at a and this is different than the national building code the national building code calls for snow load okay but whereas this manual calls for a uniform load across the uh, the lintel okay and I, and I and I would say that that's probably the better way to go because there's other factors besides the snow load that could affect that okay so when you're looking at uh, a, give you an example if I got a 500 pound uniform load okay on this and I'm uh, I've got a span of three feet it's going to tell me that I, I got put 110 m bar but I don't have any stirrups here okay so now let's just jump down here let's say I got a five foot opening and we got a thousand pounds uniform load it's going to tell me that I'm going to need a 120 m bar at the bottom okay and I'm going to need a stirrup and distances of 12 inches so again is that you know those things you'll need to look at now one of the things that I kind of looked at is when you look at a, a roof truss drawing and they'll give you the loading over here but this is not a uniform load this takes into the uh, the area so you need to do is that if it gives you a number here you got to divide that by two because it's two foot spacing that'll pretty well pull you into the uh, uniform load just give you an idea that's what I how I look at it like if I've got a, a thousand pound uh, load coming down in this number 12 right here okay I would divide that too because that's taking in a, a I believe is a tributary area so you know you can find it in various ways but again is that that's where your your designer and has to work in concert with your roof truss uh, so, and floor supplier okay so you know they need to have a look at that and make sure they get the right uniform loads and then again we've got concentrated loads like a point load from a girder those type of things, they need to, you know, they'll need to be addressed, especially when they're going on a lintel. It'd be no different than doing a a dimensional lumber, two by 12, two ply header or whatever. And next thing you know, you got a girder on the top of that. We're gonna call for an, uh, an LVL. So the concentrated point load on, on an ICF is no different. Okay, well, I think that's the end of my uh, show here, uh, and I hopefully that uh, that it's, it uh, will help you folks a little bit on uh, on understanding the ICF and, uh, construction. Again, it's a little bit uh, daunting, but uh, I'll be dealing in the next session on shear walls, and that's where we we'll hopefully we can make a little head grab away. But again, is that you have to look at when you you start out with an you need to start out to see what the design method the builder is using, whether he's using a national building code or whether he's an ICFMA, but you need to find out where he's heading down that path. And then you can, then you can pick away at a code review. Anyway, take care, have a good day, and we'll see uh, on the next session.